Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome for the very first time to a brand new side series in which we are simply going to be building a fleet, which most likely is very evident by the title of the new series. Although I haven't 100% yet confirmed it, it's probably called something like Building a Fleet, because I'm just that original. Anyway, the whole point of this series is that I'm going to be building a new starter fleet from scratch, and I will be going along each of the designs doing loads of battles, loads of stress tests versus, well, stress tests versus the enemies of the Deepwater Guard, Onyx Watch, and so on, just to see have I improved, have I got better, and let's see if I can build things I don't normally build, with one exception. The first craft. This is definitely not something unique. This is very similar to the Plague Guard, but scaled down and much, much cheaper. In fact, currently less than half of the cost. In future episodes, I will start from scratch, but in this episode, I have already built most of it because I was just building last night and then decided to ask Twitter. Should I make this a series? Should I go ahead and actually do this on camera? And the overwhelming majority was yes. So here we are. So what we're going to do is a quick rundown of this craft and then get into a couple of fights because I am yet to test out this craft. I have built it over the last four or five hours and that's literally it. So to begin with, we have three sets of three cram cannons. These are not all that powerful. These are very cheap and very, very small. They only go in about to here. They're only four deep inside of the actual hull itself. So not exactly large and certainly very, very cheap. They are somewhat quick firing at a 7 second cooldown and they fire 1000 millimeter shells which is half of the maximum. They are very highly explosive and they get to almost maximum uh, cram level? Pa what's actually called? Uh, da -da -da -da. If we go to explosives is now 100 after so many seconds. The density, they almost get to 100% density. I think they get to something like 60, 70, which sounds like it's far off, but it slows down as you continue. So the whole point is that they have a lot of explosive damage for their minimum size. Minimal size is what I was meant to say there, not minimum. Apparently I can't talk. It's currently 6 a.m. because I woke up with my bad back. I had maybe three hours sleep. So yeah, not the best with the whole talking thing. After this, we have lots and lots of armor. We have layers upon layers of heavy armor with some areas like this not yet finished. Again, this is a very unfinished craft. And then we have some metal armor in the very core around the AI and around the three ammunition sections. And we need that much ammo, trust me. We are currently running off a steam engine because it's easier to, to protect overall. And we also have battery power, which of course is how the steam engine is currently giving us power. So rather than giving it us directly, it simply powers up the batteries. The batteries are then using electric engines, which then power the craft. I prefer this personally because if you destroy the engine, you still need to destroy all the batteries and the electric engine as well before we're completely out of power. Which is good because this thing is covered in strength 3 shields. You can't currently see them because they are on 0% uh, light, colour, whatever it's actually called, and they're actually turned off when not in combat to save us resources. Now in the future, we won't have to do these rundowns because we will start from scratch, but yeah, let's just continue. I know this could be a little bit boring. Next up, we have these lovelies. We have lots and lots of torpedoes. We have them on both sides, and they are very slow. They are not good at turning, but they have a lot of warheads. I think they're five warheads each, so when they hit a target, they do tend to break through the hull of even layered metal armor, so they quickly cause the enemy to have loads of hull breaches, and then they simply sink. At least that's the idea. Against other wooden craft, you're mostly looking at making them a bit unstable, perhaps tipping them slightly, but less so the whole sinking thing. Of course we have missiles, although I am tempted to not even have these. The reason is, missiles have been a little bit underwhelming, especially against larger opponents, even when you go very heavy in terms of the warheads, but they are still quite expensive. They're a good side weapon, but not much else. But it's that ammo cost which really makes me think perhaps this area here is a bit of a mistake. Instead, I could just have it purely for cosmetics, similar to the Plague Guard, just a lump of armor. Maybe it could even hold a redundant AI so we don't just have one. Something like that, but we will see if they're any good versus larger opponents in a little while. They're definitely reliable, and they could be anti-air weapons. But 
I am very unsure about this. As you can tell, the top section is not done, and the back section even less so. The only thing left to mention is how weirdly stable this thing is. It has internal blades, which are currently off, because I want to redo them, and it has a very, very strong PID system, which also runs off of some of these lovely propellers on the bottom of the craft. So it should be incredibly stable, unless the PID is destroyed, or it's just taken critical damage. I just want it to stay upright. That is one of the problems with making the craft so thin. I also want it to be fairly quick, hence trying to make it a little bit more streamlined than usual. Normally I build blocks. I admit that. I'm a blocky builder who builds blocks. So let's get a fight started. I would go up against the Bulwark, but that's just massively unfair. It costs four times more than us. In fact, more than four times. And it's triple the volume. So, no thank you. What we're looking for is something a little bit smaller. I should also mention, we do not have any repair bots at all currently on the craft, so this thing will not be healing during combat, since I want to see how well it takes damage, and if it starts healing, that can give weird results. So this is the enemy we're going with. I have never actually seen this in the campaign, but it looks like a good match. It's over double the cost, I will say that, and it does have a 7,000 volume advantage, but it is in the expert and not in the godly category. I was honestly after a godly, but this just seems more interesting, plus of course I've never seen it before, so that should make it more fun as well. How they've spawned in though, I don't particularly like this, because I don't think our torpedoes will even fire until we are broadsiding way more than this. Also, this is definitely more of a broadsiding craft than head-on. Which could be said for this as well, but how all of these things are set up, I think this is going to have a huge advantage. The unfinished craft versus something I've never seen before. Well, let's see how it goes. Yep. Oh no, torpedoes are firing. It's just about angled enough. Okay, first cram cannons were shrugged off. That's good to see. Let's see how well those missiles are doing since we may end up just removing them. Little bit of damage being done. A barrel was destroyed with them. Okay, incoming torpedoes, and lots of huge explosions there, although it seems I need to make them a bit more agile. Shield's actually doing quite well, but we are taking a lot of damage. Cram seemed to be firing fast enough as well, which is nice to see. Shield managed to catch that, but still a lot of destruction. Yeah, torpedoes need to be a little bit more agile. I think I've been too greedy with their explosives. But they are doing a lot of damage. Look at that. Just layers of armor have just been absolutely eradicated. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, the torpedoes are doing well. That is a large chunk. Health-wise, the enemy is winning. Honestly, I do expect the enemy to win this. But if we get close, then I will be happy. Cram doing exceedingly well. Just turned off one of their guns. Missiles doing so little. We aren't broadsiding. I think I've knocked out our front propellers. Okay, so we need to make that faster. Turbines, propellers, little things underneath. I do love fights like this. Just cram cannons, I think, are my favorite to watch. I will say that much. Okay, still online though. Still doing exceedingly well, despite being hit several times. Oh, cram going inside there, knocking out one of the weapons completely. Okay, we're still not firing torpedoes, so I need to figure out what's happened there. Oh, okay, the torpedo section was destroyed. I was thinking, is the ammo, is it... Oh, God, that gun just wants to be killed any second now. Very happy with the cram cannons, though. Very heavily modified from what they were originally, which is a stolen design from the crossbones. But made smaller, cheaper, and weaker, honestly, but more moderate. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Okay, we are tipping. Why is that? Is it the PID system which has been destroyed, or is it the turbines underneath? Let's have a quick look-see. Okay, after checking, it is definitely the PID system that has been knocked out. The entire room has been completely removed, and that is why I want some of the 
dedicated Hellerblade spinners inside just to make sure this doesn't happen because this could be the end of this fight even though we're still at a decent health. Also it turns out I was lying earlier. We have two repair bots. Well currently we have one but we had two because I needed to rebuild some sections earlier. So yeah. Continuing. Oh, look at that. Yeah, completely on its side. This is the problem with a wooden-only build like this. Well, mostly wooden-only. The entire thing wants to float, and it isn't heavy enough on the bottom. The keel it has is not enough. So increasing the keel as well is definitely the next thing I'll do. Still, though, I mean... I still think it did a lot better than I expected, so I am still really happy. The enemy has definitely taken a beating. And if the torpedoes had stayed online, and maybe if we broadsided to begin with, I think it would have done better. Especially as well if the, if the torpedoes were a little bit more agile to actually catch up with the target. Still going, though. Still going. We could get lucky. If we knock out the two AIs, we could still be seeing a victory, but it's becoming less and less likely as time goes on. Hmm. It looks like it is actually trying to right itself naturally, but the cannons are pushing it back down, also being hit, and which is forcing us down even further. Yay! Underwater missiles! Take that! They're like torpedoes, but worthless. Oh, they're trying so hard, though. That one really was worthless. I believe in you! Come on, you can do it! Come on! No! <laughs> oh, poor little things. This is painful to watch now. Oh yeah, the cram cannon's been badly damaged. You can tell by the barrels all being different sizes. It's also why it's not firing quickly. Or at all. Yes, a missile actually hit. Well, survivability-wise, I think it's proven itself. Except for the PID. There, there, there goes the cram cannon. So it does naturally sort of want to write itself. But I'm calling it here. Yeah. Oh no, is that back weapon actually working? It's just not at, at a functional angle. Oh, it so is. Yeah, the fail safe isn't allowing that to fire. There you go, the missiles. Still. Oh, look at all those rooms. I work so hard in this thing's armor, so at least I've been validated in one way. Okay, this is taking way too long. The enemy is the victor. Well done. You win my eternal pride? I like you, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Do you still have one repair bot? Excellent. That means I can um, go ahead and repair you outside of combat. We did better than expected, still. But I've already seen plenty of ways we could improve. Well then, let's get to work. So first thing I'm going to do is just add another layer to this keel. It's, I don't even know if you could actually consider it a proper keel, but it's just a, a lump of extra metal on the bottom, which makes it incredibly heavy. So there we go, let's just put these along like before. And that should still work with the turbine, so that's fine. And there we have it. That should have lowered the center of mass a little bit. Actually, yes, it did. It's lowered it by a full one block, which still, it's not good, but it's better. Ideally, your center of mass will be as low as possible, so it naturally goes into this position. But the keel is expensive in terms of volume, and that's the main problem. I don't want this to be particularly huge in volume, because I would like a couple of these ships per battle, honestly. I don't want it to be a single. So, that is one thing. The second thing is, I have decided we are going to keep the missiles, but they're going to be smaller, and thus cheaper, and they're going to be completely anti-air, because against that last craft, they were next to worthless, but very, very expensive ammo-wise. A little bit of a change of plan, we are now going to be using the laser emitters, although I will be placing them differently to this, because that's just honestly really, really ugly. Now, I am not a huge fan of the laser emitters, I don't find them very fun, I don't like how they work, 
but they are perfect for making sure missiles go after a very, very specific target. If we use the infrared or the active radar seeker, we don't really have all that much control once we release the missiles. But this also does mean if our detection system isn't perfect, we can mess up the missiles, so it no longer gives us the guaranteed damage which missiles give. In fact, that's normally their biggest strong point in my opinion. Once you fire them, it doesn't matter what happens to your craft, they will probably hit the target. And you can fire them all very quickly and blindly straight away rather than aiming weapons and such. This makes them aimable, which I don't think is a good thing, and currently we don't even have a detection system attached, so... Yeah. That's the last thing I'll do, by the way, because building detection systems is the most boring thing in the game. Where are you? There we are. Flying squirrels, everyone. Missiles, go! Let's see how agile you are. Oh, no. Swap targets. I thought they were missing. Okay, a couple of misses there. Whoa. They can go back on themselves really well. Yep, they were fine. They were more than fine. They're actually very fun to watch. Hitting a flying squirrel with cram cannons is always pretty fun as well. Of course, they're not as powerful as they used to be, the flying squirrels, because of detection systems and such. Back in the day, they were, they were the bane of existence. Actually, speaking of which, is the... Where are you? I want to know if one of the old... Yep, the coffin nail still exists. I just want to fight the coffin nail, I'm sorry. Bit of a distraction here. This thing killed me so many times when I was first starting the game. I occasionally just like to kill it, for this very reason. Well, doing enough damage to even a heavier flyer, I suppose. So yeah, I think these missiles are a good alternative to what they were. <laughs> cram cannons. I love cram cannons. The next craft, I think, will have advanced cannons, though. Probably a, a few 500mm or something like that, since that's normally what I don't go with. Okay, enough messing around. The missiles are fine. We'll add the laser emitters at the end. In fact, we could make this section here look a bit like a command section. And then we could have these on top, which would look really cool. Now for the back section. So, one thing I do want to do here is add one of the lovely dedicated Hellerblade spinners. And this is actually going to be for forward propulsion, because I just find it really easy to make crafts fast if you use this. And honestly, it's very easy to do as well. So I'll actually go through the process, since I have had people before ask me exactly how I do this. So, now, the center of mass is between two blocks. That actually makes things way worse for me. But that's fine. That's fine. We'll just continue with that. For some reason, losing some frames right now. I don't really know why. So, a little bit of a skip here, because the recording software just failed. Thank you very much, recording software. But all I've done is I've added the dedicated Hellblade spinners on the block above and below the center of mass. This way, we don't end up pitching up or down as we go forwards. And now, I'm just adding two control blocks. And I'm just going to put these down here. We currently have loads of repair bots because I had to repair after the last fight. And I'm probably going to segment this craft here. So I'm going to want these to be a little bit raised from the floor, but not by much. These aren't really crucial control blocks, so I don't really care that much about their protection. But it would be nice. And this one will be used later, but we only need two. Yeah, we only need two. That's about right. So I've added these. I then went ahead and I've added the... Pole extenders going all the way across, all the way down to here, and then I've added some of the Hellerblade extensions. Now, this will kill some people's OCD, but you do not need these to be facing any particular way. So if I do this, there we are, this one's different. Oh no, but it will work the exact same. I will now change it back. But either way, it will work the exact same, even though, as you can see, these are facing down, these are facing down. In the, in the real world, this makes no sense, but it's absolutely fine, and it's far easier to do because of the mirror mode. I then went ahead and upped the motor drive to maximum, which means these will use a lot of engine power, but will be incredibly fast. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure these work with the control blocks, because naturally, the AI will not use these. So, G... H. H in red, G in green. That means go forwards, that means go backwards. As simple as that. 
I'm also going to put them on instant spin because I like it more on instant spin. doesn't really matter too much. It just means it's easier to, to stop and start, and I don't even know if that actually works with the control blocks. So that was a bit of a waste of time. So now with this, the control block, what we want is activated when control received to go forwards. The AI is saying in the craft to go forwards. Then we want to activate the control and put that as G. So when it's going forwards, anything with that green G will activate. Simple as that. As, as I was saying earlier, this is a very simple thing to do. And then we want the opposite. I've just realized something, and I kind of paused halfway through speaking then. I've actually disabled reverse in this craft. This is not needed, but we're going to do it anyway. So if we want to go backwards, activate control and H. Simple as that. Now I will let go of the craft and drown by accident. And I'm going to order this to move its butt over to there. And fleet move. So what I should see is these. There we go. Whoa, yep, yeah, that is definitely moving faster than it was. Now I'm going at 15 velocity. Still not quick, but in comparison to what it was at, that's actually pretty good. Not using that much engine power. Okay, I'm going to up the amount of extensions we have by a couple. In fact, just by one. One in each direction. If we're going at over 20, I think that's as fast as I really care about. The Malal's will went at something like 10, and I found that to be a little bit slow to respond. Hmm... Now, this is definitely not efficient in many ways, but it's just so much easier to do this, in my opinion, than adding thrusters or extra propellers at the back. Don't want this any bigger, though. At that point, it becomes difficult to defend. And that's the whole point. This is going to be really easy to defend. We can have multiple layers of armor around it. It's not the back. It's not outside of the craft. It's all nice and central. The question is, is that fast enough? I don't want it to be ridiculously fast. There's the thing. I don't want it to be stupidly fast because then it won't look right. It'll look weird. And already I'm actually seeing a bit. Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to keep it like that. Now, what else I'm going to do is similar to that. And literally next to it, what I'm going to do is add some turning blades. So these are going to act in the exact same way, but instead of go forwards, go backwards, it's going to be your left or your right. And that can be found here. Activated when control received to go right or left, and then obviously different letters. That way we have a fully internalized, very heavily armored section which controls the movement of the craft, making it very difficult to stop this thing from moving. That's why I like this so much. It is debatable if this is even worth it because it is very expensive on your engine power. As you can see, I'm using a thousand engine power already. That's the second thing on the... Uh, where are you? The second thing on the bottom right, I kind of couldn't find it there. So bottom right, go up one, and that's the engine power. Currently at 4,100-ish out of 5,200. I'm not good at explaining. I'd be a terrible teacher. Change of plan. We're going to add this to the front, the turning section, just because I've got other plans for this section. And honestly, this is a really good space for just hiding some other stuff, like PID systems and such. At least a backup one. Or maybe, even, or maybe even a backup AI right here, because there's nothing explosive nearby. Yeah, that makes more sense. The front, I am now going to add turning. Hello, front section. I'm fairly certain we have three or four rooms here completely empty. Yep, that's just literally batteries, and... Where are you? I know I've got empty... Aha! Hello, empty rooms! Yep, that's what I was talking about, and we could convert this into an empty room as well. Again, this way I love batteries with electric engines. You can put them everywhere. Try to stop all of my engine power. It's going to be difficult. Now, there are explosives here, though, so this is going to be one of the main targets. In fact, we saw this area blow up early on. And in fact, I think that might be the reason why we lost our torpedoes so quickly, so I may even move that ammunition store. So, once again, similar to the ones at the back, all we're doing is adding two controls, one for reverse, one for forwards, and then on the opposite side, we're going to do the opposite. So, J will become green and K will become red. This way, they can turn the craft at the front. And because it's so far forwards, this should really help. Please don't crash into that tiny little landmass. Of course you would. Why wouldn't you? It's not like your AI has a set depth or anything. 
It does, by the way. Okay, just try and turn. Yeah, that's fine. We don't really want it much faster than that. Once again, we don't want it to look weird when it turns. It's looking a bit too fast and a bit too steady, honestly. It's a bit weird to see. May add one external section down here with the propellers. But otherwise, yeah, it's doing okay. A little bit sluggish on turning, but not too much. I didn't really add a particularly large section to the front, honestly, since I do want that area to still be quite heavily armoured, and I didn't really have as much space as I thought I had. Okay, yeah, gonna add one more external section here, and that should be okay for turning and okay for movement. Then we can finish off the back, finish off that, and the craft is pretty much done, except for a few decorative things. That's better. Okay, yep, that turning speed is absolutely fine. There's a larger section at the back now, and a larger section at the front. In addition to the internal blades, trying to stop this thing now will be quite difficult, especially since these propellers will be moved much further back by the end. Oh dear. Yeah, your turning is actually too good. That is way too weird looking. Thankfully, in, com in combat, that won't quite be the same. Uh, let's just spawn in a quick enemy. This is just to die, so... Hello, Bailiff. Just want to see how we act. Nice and smooth. Okay, yep. In combat, it will look much smoother. Outside of combat, it will look a bit silly because of how many things can help us turn. And how sharp that turning can go. Also, that's the range of the missiles, apparently. We're going to end up with a little bit more space than I originally intended at the back, and that's actually potentially a really good thing. This way, we can separate the two movements from each other even further, but also we have space for a backup AI and a backup PID. Which is really, really good. Having two AIs set up the exact same way, one being completely redundant, can be really good. Now, it can also sometimes mess things up, I found, but on the whole... It tends to be a good thing. So, let's just separate this for a second. I'm, I'm also currently not using any air pumps or anything like that, because honestly, this craft does not need it. It's made out of almost solid wood, and wood floats, which is very, very helpful. Not the prettiest, but yeah, that is definitely a functional backside, which is a weird thing to say. I, it has to be said. So, now what we're making is a nice little metal box, which our AI is going to go into. Then I want these to be horizontal, so we have vertical and then horizontal crisscrossing. This just makes any damage done a little bit less effective at puncturing a huge hole into it. Um, do I really need it to be double thick this way? It wouldn't hurt, but I don't want the cost. Okay, next up, we're going to use a little bit of stone. I still don't want this to be attached to metal, just in case of EMP. And this is where the next mainframe will be resting, like so. Hook it up to the same as the other one. And then... You know what, I may actually have three mainframes on this thing, just for utter redundancy. All the same stuff, and what I need to do though is go and copy and paste the other naval movement, otherwise these two will fight each other too much. So, problem time! We have too much space. Remember how I was so happy we had extra space? I have no idea what I actually want to put in any of this section. It's just empty right now, and I don't want that. I don't want just an empty section here, so what could we put here? Extra missile system. That would be easy. Bit boring, but easy. Uh, Anti-missile system, perhaps a missile interceptor or even a small advanced cannon to shoot down missiles. Possible, but expensive. We're getting very close to that 100,000 limit. An extra cram cannon. I could literally copy and paste it in, but I don't want to. <laughs> Simple as that. So I don't know what to put here. I'm thinking missile interceptors, because it's cheap, it's easy, and gives it some purpose. But also... No, actually, that's about it. That's actually about it. Don't know if this is even going to work. Missiles have been released. The gun is aiming, so that's good for a start. Okay, look at that! What? Oh no, only the first missile got through. Well done, little guy. Did see you run out of ammo there 
a bit though, but we are trying to stick to a very strict volume limit. Sorry, cost and volume limit there, and honestly, to make this any bigger and more reliable would be very expensive. I still can't believe that actually worked as well. Excellent. So all it is, is just a really small flat cannon, and it's using, if I go over to here, it's using this, the anti-missile cannon controller. Now sadly, unlike the laser muni munition defense, if I can use the words, it does not fire at cram cannons, which is such a shame. Fire again. But it is fairly good at what it does. And it can see missiles all around the craft, but I can't imagine us shooting missiles from anywhere directly in front. Now, if we're broadsiding, that should be fine. So let's spawn in a Doom drone over here. Make sure the original is still off. Allow that to fire, then turn it off, so, so it's only one volley. What was it firing over there for? Okay, yeah, there's a problem with seeing the missiles over here. Okay, not a big issue though. Just need a few more munition detectors and just to make sure we can actually see the thing. Oh, I can see what's happening. It's hitting the shield. Okay. That's stupid. The shield's been moved, the barrel is now longer, and so the shield isn't causing a problem. I then went ahead and added a load more auto loaders, which weren't as expensive as I thought, so it does fire faster. So, can it defend completely against this? Yes, it certainly can. Fully negated a full volley from the Doom Drone. Lovely. The Matriarch. I keep forgetting because there's two saves as well. One's actually been renamed. The other one is an altered version. That's what I'm using right here. Trying to fire again. Thank you. No bother at all. Now again, it's probably not going to be able to stop anything from the front, but from broadside, that's going to be a good bit of extra defense. Now, I am really out of time for today's video, so what I'm going to do is add all of the other stuff off camera, and then in the next episode, we'll simply start a brand new build. So all I'm going to be adding is a bit of a bow to the top here so it looks a bit nicer, a little bit more armor on the back, adding the turret cap, just trying to make it look a bit more presentable. In terms of actually working, I think it is. I think it's doing just fine, so this should be a fully functional vehicle. And so... The final test versus the Malal's Will version 2. It's more expensive and it has much higher volume, a full 3,000 more volume. I don't actually know who will win here. I'm hoping the new vehicle because then it shows I've got better at building, but this thing is a bit ridiculous when it comes to firepower, so we'll see. I have a feeling like it might be luck depending on where it hits. And begin. Okay, I just want to see these first few shots. Let's see how much damage these cram cannons do. Wow, what a time to pause it. Lovely. Complete destruction of that section. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Torpedoes have been released. Shields working quite well there. A lot of those shots were deflected. One of the ammo stores did go up, though. Remember, these are Hesh shells being fired at us. And Hesh is ridiculous. Good bit, a good bit of deflection there. Incoming the torpedoes. Missiles doing okay, I suppose. Yep, the torpedoes did a lot there. Wow, a massive section of the Malal's Will was just removed. Come on, single torpedo, I believe in you! Oh, lovely, hitting underneath. Next volley of crams, and another chunk made, and one of the weapons offline. The okay, so here's one good thing about using the laser designator. The missiles are going to go where the AI is pointing, the AI, and the AI will always point at the ammo and the AI of the enemy. 
So the missiles are actually going to be really nasty there. Okay, the torpedoes are coming up, and that is a lot of blocks in the air. The back two guns are gone, and incoming cram again, annihilating that section. Okay, so for reference, let's have a quick look-see. So the middle is very badly damaged, one of the only sections of heavy armor there. We've lost mostly... Just armor. Yeah, very little functional stuff has been removed. Also, I could set up this weapon to both be what it's currently, the anti-missile, and also attack regular opponents, but I think I would rather have it dedicated. Yeah, looking really good. Because there's the ammo. The ammo was separate. Essentially, it has two separate sections in the front. Mine gun has been removed. The torpedoes are no longer being fired at the right I'd expect, so I'm assuming that's because of the ammo loss, or it could be the torpedo section itself is damaged. Um, both. Yep, definitely. Oh, yep, yep. That whole b bottom section has been completely severed. And same with the missile. Okay, so that's the loss of both of those. I think I need to armor up the torpedo section a bit more. Down to 88% health. My talking is severely diminished. Apparently that was also hit with a gram shot. Why is your aim so off? Oh, because you've lost some barrels. Okay, that would explain that. Ooh, well, there goes that weapon. Oh, AI dead! Okay, I was wondering why it stopped. Now, we did have the repair bots, but so did the Malal's will. In fact, the Malal's will had more. Okay, yeah, so a very clear victor there. The new ship just very clearly won. So, 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 things I want to do differently. I think, yep, the inside of here needs to be better protected, especially from this exploding. That caused that damage, and at the front... That also caused damage, so I think there needs to be more separation. I also don't... Uh, do we need as much ammo as we have? I don't know. Little things like that do need to be changed. But, that was a very good fight. And again, both sides did indeed have repair bots, so it was not exactly a major difference there. I will, though, now go and remove them. Well, I'll, I will let us repair, then I will remove them all, except for one. All removed, except for one. There we go. And I'll quickly save this. So, let's see the stats. 17,600 volume, 95,000 material cost. That is very cheap for its role. Things I need to change before the next episode. So, we need to make sure that the torpedo section does not die so easily. Because it is such a huge contributor to the damage of this craft. I would almost say it's the main weapon. The cram is doing fine. I think it's shooting a little bit slow, but it is doing a lot of damage when it hits. It's a nice compromise. It's very cheap because of this. In terms of armor, I think I've done well. That's one of the few things I am proud of. I think I have learned enough now to make decent armor sections. The anti-missile system is fine, but I need to do the turret cap. And I want to figure out what I'm going to do up here. Now, I don't know what I called it earlier, but I definitely need to build a bit of a bridge on top of here. That way, it would look a bit less flat, a bit less boring. I do get into the habit of building ships very similar over and over again. If you look at the Plague Guard, it's probably going to look very similar to this, especially with its weapon placements. But in the future builds, I will be striving to build a bit more unique, to build a bit differently. And that's the whole point of this series, for me to stop building everything the exact same. Not exactly the best example, this one being the first vehicle, but considering this wasn't even meant to be a series when I started this last night, I think it's turned out pretty well. I've also now realised that recording this video has took way, way longer than expected, so I will be wrapping it up here. In the next video, I'll do all the changes which I said before, and we will be building a new vehicle. If you have any suggestions what type of vehicle you'd like to see, then of course, tell me in the comments. And I would love some name suggestions and a bit of lore for this one as well. So... 
Thank you so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye.